and amen. Would you welcome Dan and Amanda here tonight? Thank you. I gotta get the list. So, sorry. garden filled with flowers and green grass like a carpet kissed by the morning dew you bless the seeds of love I've sown and warm my heart so they could grow now shelter me in your arms Lord for the storm is passing through. Walk through the garden of my heart and calm the storm, Lord. Lest the pretty roses fail to bloom again. Make the raging winds a gentle let me feel your sunshine, please, Lord. Walk through the garden of my heart. Well, I can to the roses and plant the seeds of kindness so the bitter weeds can't grow but I can't cause the rain to fall on the dry and thirsty soil and I can't calm the storm Lord or the angry winds that blow. Walk through the garden of my heart and calm the storm, Lord. Lest the pretty roses fail to bloom again. Make the raging winds a gentle let me feel your sunshine, please, Lord, walk through the garden of my heart. Walk through the garden of my heart and calm the storm, Lord. Lest the pretty roses fail to bloom again. Breeze. Let me feel your sunshine, please, Lord, walk through the garden of my heart. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming out tonight. We are Dan and Amanda, and we count it a privilege here to be with you and to be singing here with Gospel Express teams. And this next song here is a song called Farside Banks of Jordan. Steps are growing wearier each day. Still 
I've got a journey on my mind. The lures of this old world have ceased to make me want to stay. But my one regret is leaving you behind. But if it proves to be His will that I am first to go, then somehow I have a feeling it will be. When it comes your time to travel, likewise don't you feel lost. For I will be the first one that you see. And I'll be waiting on the far side banks of Jordan. I'll be sitting drawing pictures in the sand. And when I see you coming, I will rise up with a shout and come running through the shallow waters, reaching for your hand. Through this life we've labored hard to earn our meager fare. It's brought us trembling hands and failing eyes. I'll just rest here on the shore and turn my eyes away. Until you come, then we'll see paradise. And I'll be waiting on the far side banks of Jordan. I'll be sitting drawing pictures in the sand. I see you coming, I will rise up with a shout and come running through the shallow waters, reaching for your hand. And I'll be waiting on the far side banks of Jordan. I'll be sitting, drawing pictures in the sand. And when I see you coming, I will rise up with a shout and come running through the shallow waters, reaching for your hand. Now come running through the shallow waters, reaching for your Okay, here's a song Amanda wrote. It's called I Have No Fear. It's a good song for the time and day we live in. Oh, did we put it in there? Whoops. Sorry, wrong key here. Sorry. We'll try it again. Okay. Still brings, but Jesus 
Jesus is my Savior, I'll live with Him forever. And since I'll be with Him, I have no fear. Since the Lord is in control, I have no fear. Since He rescued my soul when He is near. When my life here is over, I'll rest beneath the clover. And since I'll be with Him, I have no fear. told us of things yet to come like signs in the moon the stars and sun though many will be troubled I'll rise above the rubble and since I have this hope I have no fear since the Lord is in control I have no fear since he rescued my soul and he is near when my life here is over i'll rest beneath the clover and since i'll be with him i have no fear and since i trust in him i have no fear Okay, we've got two more songs here we're going to sing yet. Um, this one is called Sounds Like Heaven to Me. Lord, I know my footsteps, they stumble and falter, but I'll run to you all the same. Seeking a home for the true and the faithful, Somewhere beyond sickness and pain And I've read all about it, that beautiful city And I wondered if it could be true Lord, I don't know if I'll ever need something that pretty But I know that I'll always need you I've heard that you're building a man but that's not what I'm dying to see I could live anywhere Just as long as you're there Then that sounds like heaven to me And I've stood like a child At the foot of a mountain Where you paint the sky with pure gold and I can't help but wonder when my journey has ended What glory my eyes shall behold I've heard that you're building a mansion But that's not what I'm dying to see I could live anywhere just as long as you're there And that sounds like heaven to me But that's not what I'm dying to see I could live anywhere Just as long as you're there Then that sounds like heaven to me Oh, that sounds like heaven to me
how vast beyond all measure that he would give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory shoulders ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Dave. Yeah, thank you again, Dan, Amanda, and each one that here uh, playing along. Music. Isn't it wonderful that God created singing, music, and even harmony? Uh, that we could sing, and it's a preparation for heaven. Uh, Elmer Glick, dear friend of mine, somebody just said his name back there to me and said, hey, it's his uncle. I think he's 93. Boy, would he love to be here. He just can't make it down here this year. A lot of you know Elmer from Lancaster. And uh, he had a dream. He went to heaven. And in heaven, said Nelson, you have never heard such singing. The angels, the wings were just going like this. There were little angels. And they were singing, then there were bigger angels in back of them, and they were all singing. And you know, he had that vision, and they thought he died, that he was dying, because he was unconscious. All of a sudden, he opened his eyes. <clears throat> and the family had been there, because the hospice said, this is it. <laughs> well, God healed him of his cancer, and uh, he's still living, very much. And so anyhow, uh, heaven... This is a foretaste of heaven. In fact, we're going to sing right now. Join us. When the roll is called up yonder, just join with us if you want. A little bit of track. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Everybody, when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll 
is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of His resurrection share. When His chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Everybody, let us labor for the Master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all His wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll called up yonder when the roll when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there some glad morning some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away are you ready to a home on God's celestial shore I'll fly away
sitting back here he's I didn't point him out he was but he's 96 years old and uh, he's sitting back here dad raise your, give a wave so we know who you are I'm not gonna ask him to stand but uh, <laughs> that was too fast daddy do do vittle 
Do they hunt Newfoundland spizzle? They're okay. Yeah, all right. Yes. And it's such a blessing to have him here. And in front of him is Aunt Nancy. And on Thursday, she'll be 91. And she's been uh, over in Belize. She was there for 50 years. And that's Dad's sister. Dad's brother was here last night. I don't know if he's back here tonight or not. But he's 92. And he was there with us last night. And it's just such a privilege and a joy to have them here and to have Dad. Uh, he's so special to me. I thank God so much. All right. Let's sing it.
God is good all the time. You know, we believe that tonight. Not because of what we feel like, but the Bible says God is good. And, you know, we can, we can stand on that. No matter what you're going through tonight, God is still good. This next song Emily's going to share is He's Mine. And I just want to invite you tonight, if, uh, if God is yours, just, just tell him that you love him.
Amen. He's interceding for you tonight. Jesus Christ. He is interceding for us here tonight. Praise the Lord. I'm going to introduce our family right now. My wife, Katie Ann, for 25 years. Uh, we live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I do some farming there, and my wife is a homemaker. Home schools the children. There's a lot of teaching and a lot of uh, praying, and just really appreciate her input. Um, Linda is our oldest, uh, married to Jordan Slayball. They live in Lancaster as well. Barbian is next. She's 22. Wilma is 20. Josh is 17. Carrie is 15. Emily is 12. Malachi is 9. Adro is 7. Jalen is 4. And Kezia is 1. <laughs> so. We are grateful tonight. Um, for each one of these children God has given us, we... Uh, we recognize they're a gift, they're a, it's a heritage that the Lord gives us, and we're grateful for that. Um, we're anticipating uh, another generation. Our daughter's expecting a little one this week, so we're anticipating to be grandparents here before too long. And uh, it's going to be a new step in life, but we're excited about that. the sun, you know, that's going to lighten the whole world, but we can be a bright spot for someone, and uh, it don't have to be much to lighten somebody's load. Uh, this next song we're going to sing is I Know, and I guess I just want to, even with the message last night and just the challenge to know uh, if, we've been, if we've been born again, if we've been saved, uh, this song talks about knowing that your name is in the book of life. You know, I believe, uh, according to the word, we can know. Um, Paul exhorted, I'm not sure, one of the, the letters he was writing, he was exhorting, uh, I think it was Timothy maybe, but just to uh, greet those. And he named a few people, and it says, and those whose names are written in the book of life. I believe we can know. Oh, bless the name of 
of Jesus. I rise above all doubt and strife and read my title clear. I know. This next song they're going to sing is um, Give It to Jesus. And it talks about things that maybe we wish we wouldn't have done or words that maybe we shouldn't have spoken. You know, that, that happens in everyone's life and uh, sometimes more than we should. But, you know, Jesus came for those who are sick. It said those who are whole need not a physician. We don't have to um, be ashamed to come to Jesus just as we are. Torn apart. 
As we see the day approaching, help us to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen and amen. As they were singing those songs, and the one before the last one of just the bringing our troubles and things to Jesus, you know, I was picturing all over the world what is going on, and you know, we can either focus, would you agree with me there's a lot of darkness in the world today? You know, we can either focus on the darkness or we can focus on the light. And how does, how does darkness, how do we get to a place where, where there's so much darkness? How does that happen? Do we all of a sudden just turn a switch and the… yes. Okay. You want to bring her in here? This is a little girl that is lost. Well, she shall be found. Okay. Anybody know this little girl? All right. Okay, you'll take her. Okay, you have an ID? No, I'm just kidding. All right, apparently they all, all oh, were you not bidding? Maybe you, we're not selling her here. All right, um, parents, if you know this little girl, I tell you what, why don't you take her back to the sound booth and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there, okay? Thank you. She will be just fine. And so to every parent, if you can hear me, if you lost a little, I don't know how old she is, maybe three, two, or, what's her name? Oh, she's not telling her name. Okay, well, she's not looking real sad, but Navy uh, dress. parents, if you lost a little two-year-old, um, can't find her, Navy she is back dress. at the sound booth. What's she wearing? She's wearing a navy blue flowery 
Is that flowers? Flowery dress. All right. She will be found. Amen. So how does, uh, where was I? <laughs> uh, how does darkness happen? Do we all of a sudden just turn darkness on? We all agree there's a lot of darkness in the world, right? So how does it happen? How does, how does darkness come to be? Well, it, darkness is nothing less than the absence of light. So how does darkness exist in the world? Is it not because the Christian has turned off the lights, if you will? If you, we would turn off all the lights in here, all of a sudden we would take the switches and we would just turn off all the lights in here tonight. It would get dark. Nobody turned the darkness on, but somebody turned the lights off. And so that's how darkness exists in the world. So we can either complain about the darkness and complain about how bad the world is, or we can turn the lights on, and the light is Jesus. So again, God is calling in the midst of the crisis. This is the title of my little talk here tonight. In the midst of crisis, let us worship him. In the midst of our crisis, let us worship him. There's a story in the Bible that that happened. And that is in Acts chapter 16. I'm just going to go, go through this real quick here tonight because I know we want to keep on singing here tonight. But this is a story of Paul and Silas where, you know, they were, they were performing miracles. I was reading this again today, and there was a spirit of divination cast out, and, you know, those around them didn't like what was happening. So they, they arrest them, and they put them not only in jail, but in the innermost part, like, like to the depth of the prison. They put shackles on their feet and on their hands, and, and, and they were like, we got to secure these guys because of what they're doing in Jesus' name. All of a sudden, at midnight, the middle of the night, at midnight, what do they do? Do they, do, do they just kind of buckle up and say, oh, this is just so bad in here. I just, I just can't believe what just happened to me. And here we're put in this dungeon. We're, we're put in this prison. And, and, and they're, they're focusing on what has happened to them or the surroundings around. No, that's not what they did. What did they do at midnight? says this. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. They could have looked at the darkness. They could have looked at the circumstances. They could have looked at all the chaos around them. There's so much, you know, we, we, we can get so sidetracked, and I believe it's the trick of the enemy, but friend, let us not focus on what the enemy is doing, but let us focus on the one who has defeated the enemy. We look at everything that's happened, the, 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 the arguments and government and conflict and, and, and all of the stuff that's happening in, in Canada right now. I know we have some Canadians here tonight. And I, I was praying for Canada today, praying for the nations, praying for America, praying for the nations. God is not caught off guard with all this stuff. But what is our responsibility? We can talk about what's happening here, what's happening there, but let's look into our own heart. What are we doing? We can make a difference. Paul and Silas did not look at their circumstantial condition. Here's what they did. Here's what they did. At midnight, they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Suddenly there was an earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, everyone's bands were loosed. The keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, we are all here. You know what? I, I wrote this down today as I was worshiping. I was in the back of the bus and I was just, I was just worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, just, just, just worshiping Him. Just worshiping him because I was thinking of this and how they did not let the circumstances around him uh, uh, affect them, but it took them right to the throne of grace. And they, and they sang and they prayed and they worshiped the King of Kings. I wrote this down. Our praise and worship may be the gateway to someone else's salvation. Think about that for a moment. Because of what Paul and Silas did, this, all of a sudden all the doors were opened in prison. All of them were open, and, and it was like the jailer woke up, and he was like, well, if, if they all escape, I, I'm going to lose my life anyway, so I'm just going to take my life. But Paul and Silas said, uh, don't do yourself any harm. Do yourself no harm. We're all here. You have nothing to worry about. And then the jailer came and fell before them, 
fell before them. Here's what he said. Not my words, but the words out of Scripture. Here's what he did. Paul, uh, Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm. We're all here. Then he called for a light. He sprang and he came trembling and he fell down before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? That's a good question. What must I do to be saved? Good question. And what did Paul, they cut right to the chase. This is what they said. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy household. Ends up that night, the jailer gives his life to Christ and his whole household. Household salvation because Paul and Silas prayed and worshiped the King of Kings. As you pray and worship, it may just be the gateway to impact somebody else. Rather than focusing on the darkness and all the stuff that's happening in the world, let us focus on the light, Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the only means of hope. I hope we leave here tonight so encouraged that Jesus is the, the one song. I, I don't know if I heard you sing that song. If I did, I forget. But just, I, I, I can't even put words, but I, I'm, I'm standing there. God is just ministering my hope in Jesus Christ in the midst of trouble. Worship him. Draw an eye to him. Worship him. Pray. Sing. Worship him. You know what? That keeps us lit up. And then darkness cannot exist. Right now, it is lit up in here. Why? Because the lights are on. Hello. Some of this whole pandemic stuff, and I talked about it the other night, but some of this stuff has so sidetracked the Christian, has so sidetracked us, has so become our focus because of all the fear that's behind it. And when we can plant fear in people, it's the platform to be controlled. Is that about what's happening? And many Christians today have given in to the fear and being controlled instead of looking unto Jesus. And we get discouraged. We get depressed. All those things. But friend, tonight, let's take an example from Paul and Silas. Do you think their circumstances was pretty dark? Looked pretty bleak? In the middle of the prison? And they sang and they prayed. And then the jailer came. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and... Thou shalt be saved and thy household. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in the house. You know, I think tonight of, of those words, when I read that verse, I'm thinking of this story. When I read the verse, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You know, that night in the early 1900s when the Titanic, this big massive ocean liner, when it was, when it was set to, to sail out across the ocean, this Titanic, this massive boat who, who, who even as they were building it, there were comments made, it is built so strong, so heavy, and so secure that even God couldn't sink this ship. Comments were made. But for those of us who know the story, I don't know all the details of the story, but warnings were given to the captain as they're going across the waters, and there's icebergs up ahead, and, and, and uh, the captain didn't give any heed to it, and, and then later there was a captain uh, a shift change, and, and again, warning was given, icebergs up ahead, again, thinking perhaps that, that nothing could happen because even if we hit them, it's all going to be okay because the thing is built strong and sturdy, and, but we know what happened. That night in the frigid waters, as they hit the icebergs, it penetrated. Water started coming in. People began to scream. The world was falling apart, just like the jailers was that night. Then they started dropping the lifeboats because the, the massive ocean liner broke right in half in the middle. People end up out in the frigid waters, and they start dropping the lifeboats, which I understand they had not even done a test run because thinking they will never need the lifeboats. But that night, they needed them, the first journey out. They began to drop the lifeboats down. Among the passengers was a preacher man by the name of John Harper. This preacher man was out in the frigid waters and was helping get, and, and, and they, they, they would cry out, let the women and the children go first. Let the women and the children go first. So they're putting the women and the children into the lifeboats that night so that they are safe. John Harbor was a preacher man that was out in the water, and he was preaching. 
what we just read. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. He came up to a man who was hanging on to a piece of timber to help keep him up out of the water. And he asked the man, sir, are you saved? Just like this happened. What must I do to be saved? But he said, sir, are you saved? And the man said, no. And John Harper said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And he lost track of the man. He kept preaching. Believe on the Lord Jesus. He kept preaching the gospel. He even put his own daughter in the lifeboat. But he stayed out in the water because he had such a burden for those who don't yet know Jesus. He kept preaching. Moments later, he saw the man again on the piece of timber. He said, sir, are you saved? And the man again said, no. And again, John Harper said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Moments later, John Harper went into eternity, out in the frigid waters, froze, literally gave his life for the sake of the gospel. The man on the piece of temper, moments after John Harbor went into eternity, the lifeboat came and rescued him, the man on the temper. And he lived to write the story. And the story is displayed in a museum. I've not seen it myself. I've read about it. The story is recorded in a letter of the man hanging on the piece of temper, he lived to write the story, and part of the story is that he writes that night in the frigid waters, not only was I saved by the lifeboat, but by the words of John Harper. Think about it tonight. His world, this man, people's lives was falling apart. John Harper did not look at the circumstances around him, the water, the broken boat. He didn't. He did what Paul and Silas did. Preach the gospel! You don't have to be an evangelist to preach the gospel. We may not all be evangelists, but we're all called to evangelize. Church, we need to stay lit up. In, are you all breathing out here? Yeah. We need to stay lit up. So that darkness doesn't settle into our own life. There's nothing that fires me up more than if I have a chance. Now, I, I love to preach the gospel in this setting, but one-on-one, -on -one, when the people you meet with, the other night my son was sharing about, you know, the people that we rub shoulders with, the ones we walk beside, uh, just every day, those, those uh, what if they're not ready to go into heaven? What have we done about it? I heard him in another service share that and, uh, I don't know if he said it the other night, but I, I've heard him say this where he said, friend, it's worth a shot. <laughs> it's worth a shot, right? Not everybody we tell Jesus about is, is, is maybe going to give their life to Christ right there, but it's a seed sown. But it, it, just, it just fires me up when God puts those opportunities in front of us to just share the good news. Jesus gives you hope. Jesus gives you life. Jesus! Yes! He's the answer to the world. And if we're not careful, we get sucked into the circumstances and the darkness around us. But friends, let us stay lit up. Let us stay lit up. Share the good news of Jesus Christ. But if we're not really convinced of who he is, we're probably not going to share him. And that's the encouragement tonight. Get right with God if we're not. Because time has come. I remember I grew up a little Amish boy. My father was a deacon in the Old Order Amish Church for 46 years, one of the kindest men I ever knew, godly man. I remember sitting on the preacher's bench like this age, these, these guys' age, and way back then, I'm 52 years old now, so that was whatever, 45 years ago or whatever. I remember way back then, the preachers would say, Jesus is coming, it won't be long. We don't know the day or the hour, but I do know this. It's closer now than it was then. It's closer now than it was then. I want to encourage us, let's not fall asleep at the wheel. I'll tell you a story tonight of a man. As I was reading this today, how that our praise and worship may be the gateway for someone else's salvation. Just like Paul and Silas, their praise and worship opened the door for the jailer to get saved. There's a man in a prison out in the state of Colorado, more specifically Canyon City, Colorado. In a prison there called Territorial, the reason it's 
called Territorial is the prison was built before Colorado was a state. So the building is very old, insignificant to the story, but a piece of history. A number of years ago, our family was in there doing a service at the, it was in a gymnasium and set up sound and did sound check, did music and children sang and I preached and gave invitation and about seven or eight men came forward to give their life to Christ that night and then many others, Christians, came forward and we prayed with them. After the service, the chaplains that were there with us that night, volunteer chaplains, one of them came up to us and said, do you have any idea what happened tonight? And I said, well, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but I do know that about seven or eight men gave their life to Christ for the first time according to the invitation, and others rededicated their life to the Lord. And the chaplain began to tell me the story of a man by the name of Carlos who was at that service that night. And I remember giving the invitation that night, and I'm standing there. It was just like this. It was not a stage. It was just like this. I'm standing about right here, center aisle. I'm standing about right here. And as these men came forward, I invited them to come forward. If you're here tonight, you've never prayed to receive Jesus Christ into your life, this is for you. And if you would like someone to pray with you, just step out and just come forward. About seven or eight men came. And because we didn't, there was more response than what we had volunteers for, and so I told that group all of a sudden, they're, they're standing right in front of me, and I said, why don't you all just come over here, put them right below this speaker here. The chaplains will take you over here and will pray with you, will help you come to Christ and all of that, because I wanted to give an invitation to the believers that night while they're praying. As they're moving over this way, and just over here in this circle, chaplains were over there. Here comes this gentleman down the center aisle, uh, not running but walking very fast, tears just running down his face. I'm, I'm standing there. I have my eyes open, and, I'm stand, and, I, and I watch him come. He came from all the way in the back, somewhere back in there. He came from all the way in the back. I watched him the whole way up. He had sunglasses on the back of his head and, and, and was coming very fast, tears just running down his face. He never looked at me. I'm standing right here. He walked right past me, right over into this circle, right here. Of course, my thought was, hallelujah, as kind of a, an afterthought or whatever the Holy Spirit was drawing him. And so, so he's coming to give his life to Christ. That was my thought. But I didn't know the whole story. So now, as we're exiting the prison, the chaplains are beginning to tell me about this man, Carlos, who had been incarcerated some years back and had found Christ in prison. And after he found Jesus in prison, he began to pray for his children, who were still out on the street living in a rough neighborhood. He began to pray for his children that if it would take them coming to prison to find Christ, let it be so. That was his prayer because he wanted his children away from all the chaos out there, but he, most of all, he wanted them to find Christ. Sometime later, he finds out that one of his sons and one of his daughters are incarcerated in prison in other prisons in the state of Colorado. In fact, we found out later, the night before, we were in a women's facility just an hour away from Canyon City, and his daughter was in that prison. We didn't, she didn't come to the service, but she was in that prison. He began to pray. When he found out his son and daughter in carcery, he began to pray for them. Then he also took the next step. He didn't allow his circumstances to sidetrack him. He took the next step, and he said, God, it would be so wonderful if you would somehow work it out that my son could come to the prison where I am so that... I can be a dad to him. He actually prayed that. And not only that, but he went to the officers. He pleaded with them. He asked them. He said, is there any way my son could be transferred into this prison? The officers kept denying him and denying him and denying him. 
time after time, time after time, again and again, kept denying his request. He kept pressing in. He did not let the circumstance, but he kept praying, worshiping the King of Kings. Now, I'm going to pick up this story that Carlos wrote to us after this service. He wrote us about a five-page letter, and this is a very condensed version. If I would have a PowerPoint, I'd show you a picture of Carlos. But he wrote this to us. I received it on my desk some weeks later after we were there. And I'll just get bits and pieces of it. But here's what he wrote. On March the 17th, 2019, I told the church, you all will be witnesses to God bringing my son here. I prayed that God would open doors that no man can shut. Every Sunday after that, I told them, my son is on his way, my son is on his way. In the month of May, the warden denied my request for the last time. That's what Carlos wrote. Shortly thereafter, the chapel clerks put out the sign-up sheet for the Miller Family Music Concert, which in that particular setting, they knew we were coming, we were scheduled to come, so they put a sign-up, so they had to sign up in order to come to the service. That's how it was at that prison. So Carlos sees the sign-up sheet. And he was the first one to sign his name because he wanted to come to this service. Here's what he wrote. Chapel clerks put out the sign-up sheet for the Miller Family Musical Concert. I was the first one to sign up there, and there were 74 slots. They were only going to let so many come out. 74 slots. Carlos was the first one to sign up. And then he writes, I came back a day later in faith, get that, in faith, to sign my son up. And I signed my son in slot number 72. By faith. His son was not even in this prison yet. But he kept pressing in. He kept pressing in. Not looking at his circumstances. But he kept pressing in to Almighty God. He signed up his son in faith, slot number 72. On June the 5th, I received the memo. I'll, in, I'll insert this. The date we were scheduled to be there was June the 14th. He, and there's a lot of stuff that he wrote in between this, so understand, this is a condensed version. On June the 5th, I received the memo from the intel officer that my son has been approved to come to the prison where I am. But he still wasn't there. He just got word he's been approved to come. But he didn't know when he was going to come. My son came behind the walls of this prison on June the 14th, which that night is when the service was scheduled. And because he had him by faith signed up in slot number 72, he was allowed to come to the service. So he goes on the right, and that very night, he came to your family service with me. And from the beginning, I was calling on the name, I was calling on the name of the Lord God to pierce my son's heart and conscience through the message you preached, the awesome songs of worship you sang. When you did the altar call, I told God in my heart, do it now, Lord. I was praying my heart out, he writes, with tears streaming down my cheeks. Then as I was secretly looking at my son's feet from the corner of my eye, I saw my son take off, running to the altar, and I chased after him, crying, praising, and worshiping God. Now I take you back. Remember the man that came down the center aisle? That was Carlos. I didn't know it. I thought another man giving his life to Christ. No, what I didn't know, his son was over here in the circle. He came running because he'd been praying, been asking God not only to bring his son to this prison, I want to be a dad to him. And that night, his son said yes to Jesus. Carlos could have so easily just over this time just buckled up 
looked at his circumstances. But he did what Paul and Silas did. He did what Paul and Silas did. He kept talking to God. Kept worshiping him. And that night, his prayers were unveiled right in front of him. He writes, it was the happiest day of my life. My dreams, my hopes, my prayers had come true. God heard me and he saved my son. That was on June the 14th. On July the 28th, my son is sealing the deal, making his vow and commitment to Jesus and God in baptism. I'm so blessed and honored and pleased to help baptize him with Chaplain Matt. Thank you for being God's vessel, he writes. I don't know what we're facing here tonight. But friend, there's no circumstance too big for God. There's no circumstance too big for God. First of all, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus, the light of the world? It's not just being good enough. It's not just wearing the right thing. It's not just, those are important things. But do I have a personal rela realize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? And no man comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. None of us are righteous enough to get to heaven. But Jesus is the only righteousness we need. Yes. Secondly, have I allowed the circumstance, the, the song tonight, do you have your first love? If I don't, circumstances can so easily distract us. Before long, I'm giving into this darkness and becoming part of the darkness rather than portraying the light. So I wonder if we could just bow our heads together for a moment tonight. Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Jesus, I hope I never get over the fact that you died, gave your life. They didn't take your life, but you gave it. God so loved the world that you, he gave. Thank you, Father, for giving your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember that night in May of 1991, Jesus, when you came into my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Almost 32 years ago. Lord, I think of that night. You changed my heart. Remember it so well. I think of that night when Carlos' son and others that we've seen just giving their life to Christ. Thank you that your love never runs out, never runs dry, but is always there. Here tonight, and maybe you're like the Philippian jailer. You may say, what must I do to be saved? Well, Paul gave the answer according to the Bible. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. It's with the mouth that confession is made unto salvation. It's with the heart that we believe. Will we take a moment tonight, if we don't know for sure that we're born again, part of the family of God, could we just take a moment and pray? It's not so much what we pray, it's the condition of the heart, but just a prayer of surrender or maybe a simple prayer of God be merciful to me, a sinner. You know, salvation is only, it's, it's the beginning of the Christian life. It's coming to that place of, Lord, I'm done living for me. I'm, I, I want to now live for you. Repent. Turn away. Say, Jesus, I, my body, my ears, my eyes, my, my heart, everything, it, it, it now belongs to you, Jesus. Come into my heart. Save me. Confess him with our mouth and believe in our heart that God gave his son, that he died and that he rose again. He is alive. He's not dead. And then the Holy Spirit moves in and empowers us to live for him. we take a moment and just pray. Secondly, maybe we've been distracted with some of the darkness and the chaos and the stuff that's going on. Oh, Jesus, help us not to look at our circumstances. Help us to 
look at people like Paul and Silas and others in Scripture who kept worshiping you. Help us to be a Carlos tonight who, kept, who, keep worship, who keeps worshiping you no matter what the circumstances. And maybe that will open doors for others to get saved. But most of all, it'll keep us lit up. So could we take a moment and just pause our hearts before God? However the Lord is leading you to pray, just coming to Jesus as we host his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give him what's on your heart. He can handle it. We're not meant to carry the burdens, but Jesus will carry them for us, casting our burdens upon him because he cares for us. Thank you, Jesus, for your marvelous care and love and grace. So I pray, Father, for all of us together here tonight. Thank you that you've called us to rise up, to stay lit up. Help us, oh God, to be faithful until you call us home or until you return. So I pray and speak that just over all of us tonight. Help us, oh God. Help us to remain faithful to you. To believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. To never be wavered from our faith in Jesus Christ as we see the day approaching. Thank you for meeting with us here tonight. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for being here. Dan and Amanda, if you could make your way back. Nelson, thank you, Jesus. bring them thank on. You, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory God bless to God. you, my brother. Could we sing that tonight? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the Son, yes, rock I stand, all other ground in sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trump. Now just think of these words. Oh, may I then in him be found dressed in his right, his righteousness alone. Ness, uh, faultless. Fault. Think about it. On Christ the Son. Rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Friend, that we're going to be presented faultless, do you get that? How are we presented faultless before the throne? There's only one way. And that's what we heard tonight. It's through Jesus Christ and his shed blood. When Jesus says, this is one of mine. He, she, has received me as his or her savior. Name is in the book of life as the Stolzfusses. Woo, glory. We're singing that song. I know. And as Dave said tonight, through the, the jailer said, what must I do? Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be sa saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved from eternal damnation. Saved from condemnation. Think about it this evening. That's what we're saved from. So that we can, you know, because we're born sinners headed for hell. We don't want to hear that stuff, but it's true. It's true. We're born headed for hell. We're born without hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus. Say it again, friend. It's the blood of Jesus in his righteousness. That's what takes us to heaven, is the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother Dave. Hallelujah.
Tonight, if you chose in your heart and made that decision, five words that we all need to answer is, where will you spend eternity? Got to answer the question, where will it be? Where will you spend eternity? There's only one of two places, and the choice is in our hands, what we're going to do. I pray, we pray that, if you haven't, then tonight was the night that you said, Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Then Amanda and each of you, God bless you so much for the inspiration that you all have been, and not only to us here tonight, but wherever you travel and wherever you minister. And uh, this, the songwriting giftedness also of uh, Amanda and Dan and what they share in that has been such a blessing to so, so many people. And so they're going to be sharing some songs uh, with us here. And then in closing, maybe we'll sing something together here tonight. Would you welcome Dan and Amanda again this evening? Thank you. the blood applied glory to his name glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name Thank you. It is so good to be here. Uh, we are going to sing a song here that uh, Amanda wrote. It's called, My Savior Will Be Waiting for Me. I don't know a lot of riches or fame, but I know him who calls me by name. Savior will be waiting for me.
is made of pure gold, and the gates are a sight to behold. All who reach that place will be happy and free, where my Savior will be waiting for me. All who reach that place will be happy and free, where my Savior will be waiting Okay, thank you. I'm going to introduce the band here. Um, make welcome Kyle Diener on the drums. <laughs> and Michael Fisher on the bass. Make him welcome. And uh, we have a little daughter, Annabelle. She was just up here. Um, does she want to sing this next song? Annabelle. Annabelle, do you want to help sing this song? She's pretending like she doesn't hear us, right? <laughs> um, are you going to help us sing? Um, sure. Do we have a mic? Grab mic number three. Number three. It says number three, mic three. Annabelle, we want you to help us sing. Okay. Do you want to help us sing? Not sure how this is going to go. <laughs> uh, she's just turned three years old, and we like when she helps us, but it doesn't always go that way. Um, do you want to sing your song? Might not work. Okay. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just not work. Not sure. Okay. She'll just sing without a mic or just pretend she's singing. Okay. Um, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Um, that's what we're going to sing here. Oh, and I didn't introduce, this is my wife, Amanda, and I'm Dan. So good to be here. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. And works. 
we're expecting a little baby in May, so we're very excited about that. <laughs> Okay, this is a song that Amanda wrote again, If Heaven Was Closer.
heaven was closer would we long to go like often we think of down here but now you are missing from this world below surveyed all the good things that come to me from above if I count all the blessings from the storehouse of love I'd simply ask for a favor of him beyond mortal kin and I'm sure that he would grant it again I want to stroll over heaven Stroll over heaven with you. So many places of beauty we long to see here below, but time and treasures have kept us from making plans, as you know. But come the morning. Of the rapture together we'll stand at noon while I stroll over heaven with you. I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all our troubles and heartaches are vanished away. We'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over heaven with you. I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all our troubles and heartaches are vanished away. We'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over Okay, we've got two more songs here we're going to finish out with. Um, this song is Beautiful Day. This is a song Amanda wrote, and it's on our first album together. Um, so here it is. wonderful place of beauty where we will see and bless the Lord. Never a conflict 
perfect or division we will all be in one accord beautiful day that soon is coming i will go there to take my rest beautiful day that soon approaching it is the best now i am longing to see jesus evermore walk the streets of gold witnessing mighty splendor glorious living through ages yet untold if you get there before me brother won't you tell him i'm on my way heaven is waiting for my coming beautiful day there will be no more painful parting of the mad land of great delight Never a teardrop on our eyelids, it will be day and never night. Beautiful day that I'll be joining for the Lord Jesus, I've confessed. Beautiful day when we see Jesus, it is the best. Missing many people, and I am waiting eagerly. Soon we will not be separated when their dear faces I will see. Beautiful day when we see loved ones who have moved on to take their rest. Beautiful day of great reunion, it is the best. How I am longing to see Jesus evermore walk the streets of gold. Witnessing mighty splendor, glorious, living through ages yet untold. If you get there before me, brother, won't you tell him I'm on my way? Heaven is waiting for my coming beautiful day. I cannot tell you what's my favorite up in that land so bright and pure but I just know that it's all lovely wonderful place it is I'm sure beautiful day that lasts forever where there is never more a test beautiful day that's everlasting it is the best how I am longing to see Jesus evermore walk the street of gold, witnessing mighty splendor, glorious, living through ages yet untold. If you get there before me, brother, won't you tell him I'm on my way? Heaven is waiting for my coming beautiful day. Heaven is waiting for my coming beautiful day. Beautiful day. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to close out with a song called Just Any Day Now. appearing everywhere the things he said would come to pass are now before me and I can feel a strange excitement in the air just any day now our Lord is coming he'll be returning Just any day now, His face I'll 
receive Oh, there's a longing in my heart For His appearing I'll gladly leave behind these trials Here below journey has been long and I'm so weary. Lord, I feel I'm so much closer home. Just any day now, our Lord is coming. He'll be returning for you. steady day now his face I'll see just any day now his face I'll see praise the Lord and we don't know it could be just any day we don't know when he's going to be coming back uh, let me just, I'm not sure what, it's only different ones here, but some of their newer recordings and songs they've been singing. If you enjoyed that harmonica, also this is an instrumental. Uh, I didn't ask them if I can do this, That's but fine. it's taken the liberty, so, you know. Uh, instrumental uh, hymns and especially featuring the harmonica. And so if you enjoy what they're doing here, well, I recommend you get these and can't take them along home, but you can take the CDs with you. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, the Salzfuss family, the songs they're singing are back there, and the different ones that we're singing here tonight are back there. Tomorrow night, I uh, met somebody back here. Said, have you ever heard of Edward Clausen? They said, never. I said, you are in for a treat tomorrow night with Edward Clausen if, you uh, if you've never met Edward. Russian Mennonite background, and to hear his story. If you've heard him, you know what's going to happen. And as he shares from the depths of his heart. Orange Blossom special. No, not this time. Dan is saying not tonight. Uh, hey, could you give me a B, something like that? I think it's a B, I'm not really sure. Uh, this hit All right, let's stand together. Turn around. I'm going to get my mic a little bit, Eugene, so I'm going to take it Yeah. All right, you want to tell the drummer what key we're yeah, in, too? Key of F. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, let's sing. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there Sing it now In, in the, the sweet, sweet In the sweet by and by, by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore By and by In the sweet In the sweet by and by shall be on that beautiful shore we shall sing we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and our spirit shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessing of
shall be on that beautiful shore. Before we sing that last verse to our bondable Father above, when we get to that chorus, I want us to stop the music and have the folks sing, and then we'll do a tag chorus on to it yet. I see my sister-in-law back here, Catherine, and my brother had his home going just some months ago. And uh, I'm sure these songs, along with others tonight, when you sing the sweet by and by, more homesick for heaven than ever, dedicate this sir, to you, Catherine, standing back here this evening. To our bountiful, to our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days. Now, now hear you sing it now. In the sweet, in the sweet by and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. By and by, in the sweet, in the sweet by and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Sing it one more time now. In the sweet. Give God a clap off and a praise tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. And uh, tomorrow night when we finish at uh, the Millers, we've been sharing together. We're going to do some singing with the uh, Stolzfuses and the Millers and us just doing some singing together at the close uh, tomorrow night. So we're looking forward to it. Six o'clock tomorrow evening. And by the way, again, if you want tickets or you want to be with us for the banquet on Friday night, do make reservations. Uh, there's not many tickets left for it. We could use some help. They came and said, if there be some young people, not sure why they said young, um, that would like to help clean up a few things in the back, it would be greatly appreciated. So if you're able to help us, that would be a blessing. Could we come to the Lord in prayer? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your love, your mercy, for your amazing grace. Thank you tonight that the message, Lord, is truth, it's real, it's reality, that in the sweet by and by, we will be with you in heaven because of you, Jesus Christ, that has opened up the way to glory for all who will trust you as their personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for what you've done, what you continue to do to draw us to you. Even through singing, you warm our hearts. You make us think of you, Jesus Christ. And Lord, help us to continue to do that, Lord, through your amazing grace and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray, Lord, be with us as we leave here tonight. Prepare our hearts for, Lord, tomorrow what you have in store. And Lord, may we live in the light of eternity. Because just any day now, you could be coming. We give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Bless you.